you've got the uh, cuff checklists were very interesting. So, you know, obviously well, the first one, the cue cards would be a good one to go through. It's got the, it's got the checklist in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So Scott, why don't you talk about those, those cue cards? Well, we call them cue cards, but they were, they were the astronauts cuff checklists. So they had these, these checklists on their suit. And so we kind of covered a little bit what it was included in those. And they're very much like a uh, director's notes. Well, NASA calls them cue cards as well. Well, there you go. How appropriate. They have, they have, they have <laughs> cue cards inside the CSM. They're all over the place for them to uh, do their staging with. But uh, when you realize that the astronauts, uh, when they're wearing the suit, they really couldn't, their, their vision was cut down. They really couldn't see any uh, uh anybody giving them direction and they really couldn't hear them giving them direction. So they gave them the, the, uh, cue cards on their, on their wrist. And that's why the, the cuff, right? The wrist mm -hmm. is the cuff. So that's the cuff checklist. And those are just little staging scenes. They're little storyboards on what they're supposed to be doing during that scene. And what you'll see is, is that, uh, they're showing a rock, they're giving the dimensions of the rock. They're giving the dimension, the the uh, direction of the sun, the camera settings that they're supposed to take. And there's no way they'd know that in advance on a manually operated camera. They'd, they'd show that, how many shots they're going to take of it, the distance they're going to stand away, where, the, where their footprints are where the disturbed area is, where the, they picked the rock up and moved it where the hole was and where the rock's going to be, and what the content, mineral content of a rock, once they split it open, is described for them in the cue cards in advance. Wow. And those are all there. And, and then there's director's notes giving them, uh, you know, that they're supposed to uh, give the op. Uh, observations enthusiastically and stuff like that. It's it's quite uh, quite interesting the, the when you look at all of them out there, and uh, I think Apollo seventeen has their own little language where um, they're talking about different beers that they're drinking, whether it's a Coors Light or a Black Pap Blue Ribbon, and they're referring those to. Uh, a uh, short can and a long can, which also refers to a four-minute film for the deck camera or a 12-minute 12, 12 film. You see, up on, you see up on the left there, they're showing where the footprints is, where the disturbed area would be. I mean, they haven't been there before, right? All the camera settings are there. You can see that clearly. Even the dimensions of the rock and, and what, the, what the mineral <laughs> content would be when it's split open. Scott, who made, who made this stuff available for public release that we're looking at? NASA. D d they weren't concerned about this? I mean, it... it they don't know. They, every, so it, it, it kind of leaked out. Every Everybody from NASA that was there in the 1960s is long gone. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. But, and when the, when the public are demanding information on NASA or on Apollo, right? They just go into the file room and pull up the archives and put it online for you. Yeah. They have no idea. That, that particular uh, plate there, the color plate at the start of the video, shows the date and time, who the director was and who the photographer was. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, well, even, the, wow. even, even what we show before yeah. that is in the cuff checklist, you've got the guy's name, Jones, yeah, right there. So there on the right, you've got oh Jones God. standing. So he's obviously, the director knows where he's going to be, so he's not going to be on the shot. Uh, and then if you go and you can see his name is on the color plate, so he's the inspector. And then if you look at the dates of the color plate, look at the dates there and then compare it to the actual Apollo 17 uh, mission dates. Now, all of those are online. All of those are on YouTube. That's that's unbelievable. Because there, I mean, there, 19, er, November twenty eighth, nineteen seventy two. Yeah, 
Okay, now go a little bit further in the video and you'll see what the, you know, and I put in there what obviously the mission dates are. Week, yep. week and a half prior to, right? Yeah. This, that's, this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, they have re literally released the information that busts them dead yes. dates. Yes. All of them are on YouTube for each of the missions. And just look at the raw uncut. Um, and the color plates are on there. The other ones have been edited out. They're realigned and stuff like that. They've been edited out. Wow. I have a copy of all of them right back to uh, Apollo 7, I think. Apollo yeah, if, if I were NASA, I would be on a mission to scrub every one of these from YouTube. They <laughs> should take everything down. They should yeah. take everything they put up down. All the 10,000 photos are exactly the same way. That is absolutely over the top. I had no idea. I mean, I knew there was a lot of, uh, a, a ton of it, of debunking information, but it, it almost seems like at this point NASA just doesn't care. And the only reason that they could possibly take this attitude is they think that they've already won. Essentially, they yeah. think that nobody's ever going to give a crap about this. Nobody's ever going to look into it. Nobody's, you know, always the fanboys are going to make up some excuse. There's always going to be a plausible deniability. And Honestly, after seeing what I've seen today, anybody that could possibly come back and say any of this is real has got to have rocks in their head. You know, I mean, just with what you've shown us today is over the not not to mention all the stuff that's come out before that. But I had no idea that that like these diagrams existed, you know, person placed here, uh, prop placed here. This is the specs of everything. You can, you can, read, you can read through the checklists all day long and not see anything until you understand what's going on. You have to study it like I've done. Yeah. And right. Well, we're, we're really blind. We're blind to the deception from, well, NASA, but not just necessarily specifically NASA. If you trust somebody, then you're going to be often blind to their deception. And so uh, it's not even knowing what to look for is that knowing that you're actually looking for something because most people, and they call themselves scientists, but they're pretty much the opposite of that, uh, believe everything NASA says, no matter what. But then even if NASA admits that they've done something um, deceptive or devious, uh, people just overlook it and, and give them a free pass every single time for some reason. Yeah, because it's very equatable with science. Fun. Hi, this is Paul on the Plane, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of Faking Space, our forensic image analysis series of the alleged photos we are provided by NASA and the other government space agencies. The second half of Faking Space Season 2 here will focus solely on the Apollo lunar missions, Apollo 11 through 17. The NASA Apollo Journal site has been available for 20 years, some parts as early as 1995. In 2015, NASA released more than 8,400 high-resolution images on Flickr, claiming it was every photo taken by the astronauts during the six moon missions from 1969 to 1972. What you are about to see is the result of more than 10,000 hours of research pouring over every photo, every video, every mission log, everything available online relating to NASA's alleged six lunar landings. The tireless researcher's name? is Mr. Scott Henderson, and he's been gracious enough to share his findings with us all. Before we begin, if you already questioned whether the moon landings actually took place, this and the subsequent videos will be the nail in the coffin. If, however, you believe the moon missions did take place, just like we've all been told, this video series is going to significantly shake your confidence in that belief. Mr. Henderson has created plates of photos and diagrams and included his commentary to go along with each, which I will read. So let's begin. We'll start with one of the most, if not the most, damaging evidence that the moon missions were not shot on the moon, but right here on Earth. This is a close-up of the Apollo 17 flag. We've all been told that there's no atmosphere on the moon, and therefore there could not be any moisture, right? Then why is the flag wet? 
you can see it is drying from the edges in. Additional photos in this series will reveal other areas of moisture and even standing water. The Apollo 11 LEM is on the left side and the Apollo 15 version on the right. The helium tank has been removed, not repositioned, to accommodate the rover on the descent stage of the LEM. The helium tank was used to pressurize the fuel to deliver it to the descent engine. Without the helium tank, the engine will not run. And any change in equipment would require the entire machine to be rebalanced as well. A display model or prop for a, st for a stage set can easily be modified to fit the needs of the filming being done. Further, there is no evidence that the engine has been fired in any of the videos or pictures. The lack of visible exhaust or heat waves, crater or scorching the paint on the exhaust bell housing, as well as the lack of moon dirt on the footpads, is the same for all six of the missions. And where the descent stage has a helium tank or not, makes no difference. Where the engine is capable of running or not, makes no difference. Apollo 16 Cuff Checklist The checklists are prepared months before launch. However, the information contained in them is impossible for NASA to know in advance. How could NASA know the size, shape, exact location of a rock, exact time the astronauts would arrive at it, the camera settings, position of the sun, where the footprints and the disturbed area would be located? How could NASA know the mineral composition of the inside of a rock before it is split open? On the lower left, ALSEP photos taken, past tense. The checklists are storyboards and cue cards used for filming the scenes. The astronauts, when wearing the suits, could not hear instructions from the film crew and the helmets would restrict their vision, so the cuff checklists were used in Apollo 12 to 17. Apollo 11 did not have these lists. Apollo 17 checklist contains impossible details, locating four craters to drive through and around. This is a very well staged scene. One astronaut operating two cameras and taking photos at the same time? Jones is the inspector for the filming, and his location of where he is standing is clearly marked. So what is he doing on the moon? Well, they had to make sure Jones wasn't in the shot. It's a director's note. Jones was the inspector of the simulation video shot weeks before takeoff, and this is the same video that NASA claims was taken on the moon. This is the plate at the start of the video showing the date it was shot, November 28th, 1972. And of course, Jones was never a crew member. Note the dates of the Apollo 17 mission, however. December 7th through 19, 1972. But the video was shot November 28th of them on the moon, more than a week earlier. In our next video, Mr. Henderson shows evidence that the Apollo 15 LEM was dropped during the videoing of its landing and damaged significantly. We'll cover the repairs required before the astronauts could be filmed next to the LEM. Until next time, this has been Paul on the Plane. On behalf of Mr. Scott Henderson, thanks for watching.